Well, what do you think, Sam? 6.55. He's locked into that phone. He's, I mean, he's not. He is laser focused. An inch. Yeah. We're kind of distracting him. I know. He looks tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sam Rice, can you hear us? Maybe he can't hear us. Go for Sam Rice. No, I don't no, think he I don't think he can hear us. Yeah. He'll get it here in a second. He's a smart guy. He'll figure it out. And if I say something dumb, don't be afraid to like correct me. The Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network is proud to present Old Dominion Athletic Conference Volleyball from inside Turner Gymnasium on the campus 
of the University of Lynchburg. Tuesday night fun. I'm Kyle Haney, my tag team partner for the whole trip tonight, Ryan Turner and Ryan we had you on for one set last game a week ago. Lynchburg got a win inside this gym. Might be national anthem time, but I think we're going to get to see some highlights from that game. It's now two in a row for Lynchburg. A victory this weekend on the road, which we'll talk about. They're taking on the Avert Cougars tonight. As uh, Here's some, some clips from last week. Lynchburg's opponent tonight, the Avert Cougars, they're going in the other direction. They've lost three in a row. They've lost nine straight sets. But as you and I were discussing, Ryan, it was against some really good competition up in Cleveland this weekend. So maybe can't read too much into that. Plus, it's game one of ODAC play. So everybody start with a clean slate there. Of course. I mean, every coach wants to test their team early in the season. And non-conference is there for that reason. Uh, like you said, wipe the slate clean try to make a statement on the road or uh, set the tone at home for Lynchburg Hornets. Lynchburg a sweep a week ago here against Southern Virginia. That's what you're seeing in the highlight package. Uh, four set win on Saturday. So it's six out of the last seven for Lynchburg. I guess if you're coach Hannah Givens and her coaching staff, you want to still feel great about your team, but you also got to recognize still more work to do and then a quality team to do it against tonight. Yeah, you like what you saw, but uh, you know, you got to do it night in, night out, and the, uh, the ODAC will test you. I mean, Averitt, Averitt is uh, someone who was in the finals last year and uh, looks to go back there. Yeah, the Averitt Cougars 20 and 11 last season, 10 and 2 in ODAC play. They did get to that Old Dominion Athletic Conference championship game. Their head coach, Olivia Earls, was ODAC coach of the year in her first season. Uh, you, you've got some insight there, just coaching against her and being around, and you said recruiting some of, some of the same players. Uh, tell us a little bit about Coach Earls and what makes her so good. Yeah, I mean, the ODAC is full of great coaches um, and great young coaches. Um, the players really seem to gather around coaches who have bring the energy, want to be in the gym, hop in drills, and that's something that uh, Coach Earls clearly does. We're getting some uh, rosters and starters red right now. We've got a few key players that we are keeping our eyes on. I think we've got some statistical analysis to go to, although early in the season for both squads, Ryan, Averitt comes in at three and four, Lynchburg two and three. Uh, just looking at the numbers there, I mean, anything jump out to you, or is it one of those cases where it's still a little too early to tell? It's early to tell, but I think the key for Lynchburg here is to keep up the serving success. Um, serving pressure is huge in the sport of volleyball, and they've been good at it this year. And the game we saw last week specifically here on Wayne Profit Court, Hornets really did serve it well. Their serve receive was good as well, and uh, that's an area a little bit that Abert, I think, struggled with this weekend in that trip. They lost to Case Western, Mount Union, and Allegheny, and again, all three of them sweeps. You mentioned great competition there. Still never a good feeling to lose nine sets in a row, though. No, it's not. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it was a long bus ride home after that weekend, but it, it's challenging. It's competition you don't see in your own gym. Um, that's why you travel to Ohio, and I'm sure they learned, they learned from, uh, from what happened there. Lynchburg, of, coach, of course, coached by Hannah Givens in her fourth season. Uh, 22 and 13 is her all-time ODAC record, finding a ways to win in a very tough conference, finding ways to win at home as well. 18 and 9 in this gymnasium in Coach Givens' career. Always nice playing in front of the home crowd. We saw a great crowd last week, starting to see one build here. Uh, what else is it about playing at home? Just that comfort level, I guess? It's, it's waking up in your own bed. It's practicing here. And uh, there's a couple weird bounces you can get off the ceiling that teams aren't, aren't used to. Short trip for the Avert Cougars tonight from Danville, Virginia. We'll put that thought on hold. We'll go national anthem time. And then Ryan and I will meet you at the net here in just a moment for Lynchburg and Avert Volleyball coming up next on LHSN. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three.
pregame handshake line between the Cougars and the Hornets. Always a nice little rivalry game. It was a out of conference rival for so many years with Avert being in the USA South. Now ODAC member, so we get to do this in the conference setting and uh, who knows, maybe even meet again in the conference tournament. We've got some key players that we are keeping an eye on, Ryan, for Avert, really, it starts with number 10, Aaron Gray, their senior DS libero from Virginia Beach. She is she is first in the conference right now in digs per set. Great set of hands on the back line. She'll be one that you, you don't really want to serve it to her, but she's so great with the footwork that she's going to get to a lot of balls and pass very effectively to whoever their setter is. They've got a couple different setter options. A, a lights out defender, someone this Lynchburg offense will be looking to avoid at all costs. Big hitter, big point scorer for Avert University is Emma Nash. I say points because she'll do it spiking the ball. She'll get some blocks, but she serves it pretty effectively as well. For Lynchburg, it was a great performance, a career performance for Bree Spainauer this weekend. Career high 15 kills on Saturday. That was at right around 355 percentage. When you and I were in the gym, it was Kaylee Keough that had the hot hand. And it's really shaping up that those two on the outside can do a lot of damage, and defenses can't key on any one particular hitter. When you have this many weapons, it's, it's really hard to scout, and it's even harder to make adjustments on the fly, too. Princess Salafu in the middle. We'll be talking about her a lot. The freshman Miranda Cummings has been impressive. So has Ava Meinhart. And of course, Lynchburg gets the great defensive support from Cassie Blackmore. It was a good dig there. And Keo got set up for a nice one. Tipped down by Miranda Cummings. And there's the first point of the ball game from the freshman Aiken, South Carolina, Miranda Cummings. You're getting a good look at Cassie Blackmore there in the red. Libero, Jersey, Lynchburg with the one nothing lead. KK will serve it. She's one that can score in such a variety of ways as well. A five-tool player, my broadcast partner called her, and there's one that'll go down as a point for the Avert Cougars. Tied at one. Just snuck it through the block there. We got to talk about tooling the block. That's one that if you watch volleyball you'll hear that phrase a lot and I think sometimes if you're not a really keen fan you might not understand that but we'll, we'll hold that thought until after that point let's see if we see it right here this time Hornets go over the block received well on the back line and the Cougars can't tip it over 2-1 Lynchburg lead all right when a hitter wants to tool the block Ryan what does that mean the hitters going up there and looking for all the things that aren't pressed completely over that net that can be the, the fingertips the side of the arms it's a brick wall, you can't go through it, but there are a lot of ways you can use it to your advantage. Good setup here. Maya Green got two hands on it, but it went backwards and we're tied again 2-2. Two -two. What, what is the blocker to do in that situation or is there nothing a blocker can do? As a blocker, you want to be pressed over that net from the second any part of you gets over that top tape. It's harder than it sounds uh, and it's something I know they're working on in practice. Timing is everything at, the, at that net as well. And that's what those good offenses will do. They'll set quickly sometimes. They'll go with those high ball sets and all those different options. But those take times. You, you, you said you got to work on it. I mean, you got to think we're, we're only about three weeks into practice here for these teams. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's always a bucket list every coach has coming out of preseason. And, uh, and it's on it. But you never know what point in the season you're really going to have to focus in on it. We get a little extra chance for discussion here as one of our officials has gone to the scorer's table. Uh, not sure what the discussion could be. Maybe a rotation error, but it doesn't seem like that would happen this early in the match, does it? No, the only thing I can think of, we've had a sub on the Averitt side. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have the libero out for Averitt, and I think the middles have switched for Lynchburg already. So it could be just simple libero tracking, could be out of rotation. Um, it, it's amazing how many things there are to keep track of at that scorer's table over there. No kidding. Yeah, Princess Salafu did come on. It was Miranda Cummings that started in that middle blocker spot. But Salafu always going to get into the game early. It's an Avert serve. And, um, yeah, whatever, whatever it was seems to have not resulted in a point. And really the referee didn't have a discussion with either coach. So we're good to go here in set one between the Cougars and the Hornets. There was a hit that came from out of bounds by Emma Nash and never really got the full handful, went into the net, and Lynchburg has taken the lead back. 
more subs coming into the game. You and I talked about those substitutions and how you're limited. This is Jaina Leak here who really has come on lately and, and done a lot of the setting with Maya Green. Lynchburg, I don't know if they're quite in one of those true two-setter systems, but it's pretty close, isn't it, Ryan? It, it is. Uh, what we just saw there we call a double switch. Um, you substitute a right side for a setter, and your setter gets substituted for the other right side. Um, gives you a lot of options on offense because you always have three hitters in the front row. We're getting another uh, a little delay for the official to uh, maybe just confirm what you said there. But again, no, no chat with any of the coaches, so we're good to go here. Leak will send that one off the tape and down. There's one of those perfect serves that's hard to draw up, but it works in Lynchburg's favor, and it's actually their biggest lead of the young ball game here, 4-2. to two. Not phased by the, uh, the stoppage of play. Sometimes that can ice a server. This one handled by the Cougars. They'll get in system, big knock there. KK digs it out, bump set that's really close to the net. Lynchburg will play on. The officials are looking at each other, but there must have been contact from that Avert side. There's a little one-hand dig by the Cougars, and this has turned into a pretty good rally. Swing from the right side by Ava Meinhardt ends up going nowhere, and now Avert's got it back within a one-point lead. That little, that little exchange at the net there was so close, and sometimes you'll see those referees, you could see their eyes meet there, wondering if it was four hits or just what happened. Yeah, there's always some communication. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this on the broadcast. They do have earpieces in, mm. believe it or not, even at the D3 level, these officiators, offici officials are communicating with one another during the play. Slide play to Salafu. Got a good rip at it, but handled by Averitt, and they come back and score themselves. Tie ball game right there. Well done by the Cougars. Princess Salafu let a good one fly, but that was handled nicely on the back line by the Averitt defense. 4-4, Lynchburg looking to side out. That's another term that we got to talk about. That goes back to the old school volleyball days, but you'll still hear coaches say it. Good set up there by Lynchburg, but blocked at the net, roof straight down. Cougars take the lead back 5-4. Yeah, side out is uh, it's still used in some outdoor tournaments that you'll see across the country, but thankfully we have switched to rally scoring. Yeah, in the old days, you could only score when you were serving, fans. That was a back set by Leak that Salafu had a tougher time getting to and sent that one into the net. Little mini rally here for the Cougars. Gets them on the two-point lead. You see Coach Hannah Givens for Lynchburg just inching a little bit closer to the court. I don't think she's ready to burn a timeout just yet. Dive by Blackmore to get that one dug out. Good rip there. Play on. Leak's going to set up again on the far left side. Cougars will get something with Emma Nash here. Nash gets sent back in the same direction it came from. Big point there for Lynchburg. Felt like a momentum point, too. A lot of touches at the net early on. Uh, I expect these teams both to, to kind of work in some shots, some tips more. There's always four hands uh, on the attacker. Destiny McIntosh in there for Avert in the middle. She's one to watch as well. Senior from Statesville, North Carolina. Here's our first look at Abby Barlow in the game. She'll serve it effectively. Nice dig by Blackmore. Keo down in the corner. Perfect placement there. That's one where she had the block in front of her, but she was able to get around it. Right, Ryan? The set pushed her out towards the pin. She said, no problem. I'll swing hard and deep. A lot of players try and bounce that ball straight down. They're both worth just one point. <laughs> Love the phrasing there. Keeping Barlow at the service line. We're tied 6-6. There's Barlow with a good dig. Leak will set to the other side this time. Change up over the net. Cougars are on it. Watch out for Emma Nash. Big right hand. Barlow over, but it's an over pass. Cougars are going to get another crack at it. There's the block, and that one will go down. Lynchburg takes the lead again. Great energy right there from Abby Barlow. She brings that spark. She's obviously not the only one, but you talk to all the players, and she has that personality that just can light up a room, or in this case, light up a court. 7-6, Lynchburg on top. Barlow sends it with the right hand. A little loose there on the receive. There's McIntosh, great dive from Keough. Lynchburg's on this one. Ava Meinhardt, the freshman, sends it over with another soft touch. There's Nash, received well by Blackmore. Setter attack by Leak. Favorite was ready for it. 
Good rally developing here, and there was a self-defense ball by Abby Barlow that she could not control, and we're tied again 7-7. Seven, seven. One of those swings, you don't really hate that from, uh, from Abby Barlow. It means you're in the right spot, just have to find a way to get that ball to pop up. What's, it, what's a, a defender to do? I mean, give us some of the fundamentals as far as those digs on a, on a hot shot like that. It's tough because you, you really want to be back on your heels and expect the hard driven ball, and those seem to be the ones that always get tipped just short in front of you. But stand your ground, and uh, you'd be surprised how many of those balls can pop up off one arm, a shoulder even. And I'm sure last year when you were uh, working with this team, and years past, but Abby Barlow, a sophomore, so it just would have been last year. But uh, I'm sure you sent a few, a few hard ones her way to, to get them ready, right? You always want to see something harder in practice than what you'll see in a game. And, uh, and yes, I have, have ripped a couple. There was a good look at Barlow getting her team into it. Hornets lead by two. I mean, you know, you're, you're a big guy. You're a strong guy. You're a good volleyball player. Did you have to warn them a little bit and say, all right, I'm, I'm really going to give you a hard one now? Or did they just know, hey, he's going to let it rip? I think it's just the, the natural flow of practice. You never want to warn someone okay, uh, just because the other team won't warn sure, them. Sure, right. Um, one of those always got to keep them on their toes. That makes sense. That makes, that makes great sense. Good serve there. Blackmore's on it. Keo, good swing, tipped and then handled. Rhythm play coming here from Hope Parrish. And that one will skip out of play as well. And we're tied again, 9-9. Nine, nine. We've, uh, yeah, the score, your score on the bottom line there is not updated at the moment. It's 9-9, nine, nine, Avert and Lynchburg. Let's see, we were, we were tied at two. I think we were tied at four. We're tied at six and seven. Now we're tied at nine in the first set. First ODAC matchup of the season. Meinhardt rolls that one over. Tandem block up front by Cummings and Keough. Free ball coming here for the Avert Cougars. See if they can make Lynchburg pay. Went down the middle, handled by Leak. Blackmore will bump it, now Barlow. Those three are really good. You get them on the court at the same time. There's a tip that'll go down for Avert. What a hustle play by Abby Barlow there, uh, ripping the, the pad off the pole there. Yeah, they're going to have to do a little work on the equipment. Not much. But those three in the back, I mean, Kaylee Keogh's back there with Barlow and Blackmore. It's really as good as it gets defensively. Here comes Keogh. She took one and three. Got a really nice swing off. Handled well. That one got the Avert bench into it, and that'll get them even more pumped. Feels you mentioned like as good as it gets for that back three, all sophomores. Uh, this program gets two more years with those three back there. Uh, the, the sky's the limit with those three. This is Aaron Gray at the service line. The senior is the leader in digs right now in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Good serve. That gave Barlow a little trouble. Chains up shot by Keough. And there was contact with the net, it looked like, for Avert. And that's a much needed Lynchburg point. Brings them back within one. Here comes Maya Green back on. And I believe Ava Meinhardt. Maya Green to the service line. She was the leader in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference last season in sets, or excuse me, assist per set. Second in overall assist. And then now with the addition of Jaina Leak, not the addition, Leak was on the team last year as well, but it just seems like they're sharing the setting duties a little bit more. Another delay here with our official having a conversation with the scorer's table to make sure we get the substitution's right. Following a double, another double sub, um, I, I have to think that that's what's giving them trouble. It's not easy. Um, I would not recommend keeping score <laughs> at home. This is not a baseball game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's still early in the season as well. But here's the junior, Maya Green, who is in the game and ready to serve with that left hand. Barlow. Excellent dig there. Green will set up Keo. She went to that deep right corner again, but this time missed it out of bounds. And Avert gets the point. They're on top, 12-10. See the double switch for Avert now. 
Yeah, to that service line, I believe, is Hope Parrish. She is a freshman from Newport News, Virginia. Avert's got three seniors, and they're, they're three really great ones. And a lot of their team is made up of freshmen as well. They've got a young unit, and Coach Olivia Earls likes what those freshmen are bringing to the table. Solo block there from Cummings slowed it down. Keo will get a shot, handled easily on the back line. There's Hope Parrish taking a shot. This one's still in play, and then sent straight down. That was lifted by the Hornets. And it's a three-point lead for Avert. As crazy as it is, is to say this, Ryan, I think that's either team's biggest advantage of the night so far. Just three points separate these two ball clubs. It's, it's really been tied or just one or two points the whole time. Oh, nice touch there by Kaylee Keough. Hornets needed that. That brings them back within two. KK will get to serve it now. She has been pretty good from this service line in addition to what she does at the net with those big swings. And then you saw the great touch there. Really just a feel for the game that is getting better and better. There's another point for the Hornets on a slight overpass. They make the Cougars pay. And now Lynchburg back within one. Well, on the, on the digs and receiving those serves, how do you keep it from having that overpass or having it too tight to the net where the setter can't handle it. But also, you got to keep it out of the ceiling as well. It's a tough proposition sometimes as now we'll get a good rally that might have to force my colleague to hold his thoughts about receiving the serve and digging. Yeah, really great rally here. Lynchburg pretty strong at the net. Let's see if they can finish this one off. A good sequence and there's one that went too far from Bree Spainauer. Serve receive is easily the toughest part of volleyball. Uh, a tall guy myself, I do not enjoy it. Uh, there's a very, very fine line between a perfect pass that's right on the top of the net and one that gets slammed right back down. In the in the D1s and the in the pro stuff and the Olympics, you know, you can get that that first pass as high as you need to. Whereas here at Turner and some of these other places in the ODAC, you've got the rafters and the ball gets in there and all of a sudden that becomes a problem. It's now a problem for Lynchburg. They have called their first timeout. They trail 15 to 12. Kyle and Ryan hanging out with you. Let's just keep it here at the moment. Ryan, uh, what are you seeing from Lynchburg? What do you think Coach Hannah Gibbons is talking about in the timeout huddle there? Uh, I, their offense is, is firing on all cylinders, really. Their serve receive is there. I think there's just a couple serves they'd like to have back from behind the service line. And uh, they've done a really good job of getting four hands up. Like we've said, it's been a back and forth set. I, saying anything would feel like nitpicking right, right now. I mean, it's just been a really tight match. It's, it, it feels like a pretty good timeout by Coach Givens, though, because you sense with how tight this match is, you don't want to fall down four or five because then all of a sudden you're looking at a deficit you can't make up. So I like the timeout right there, even though it is just a three-point game. You don't want the Cougars to get that momentum. Averett had some great energy in the warm-ups. Uh, that doesn't always translate to a victory, but it, it's better than seeing low energy from your team in the warm-ups, right? Couldn't agree more. <laughs> I'm interested to see. We might see a coach's point on a missed serve here. Hmm. You're going to have to talk me and the fans through that one. A little inside reference there. If you call a timeout, there it is. Coach's point for Hannah Givens. If you call a timeout, the server misses their serve, you need to turn and thank your coach for that timeout. Okay, so we're icing the server is what we're doing. Yes. Okay. I didn't know if there was some rule that I didn't know about. <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> you know, I, was, I was so confused right there. You just meant we're icing the server at the line there. That's hilarious. Oh, nice one by Maya Green to dig that out. Blackmore will do the job on the set. This one kept alive by the Cougars. Nash didn't get the full hand, handful, but got enough of it. Bree Spainauer taking flight and ripping that one down. No, excuse me, Tori Williamson. Tori Williamson over there with the levitation and the smash for Lynchburg. Tori Williamson, one of those freshmen that Lynchburg loves. The Hornets have five freshmen, nine sophomore, two juniors, and then just the one senior. That ball's way out. Easy decision for Lynchburg on that one. And just like that, we're tied up again. So how about the well-placed timeout from Coach Givens there? Down three, and the Hornets just run off three in a row.
Cassie Blackmore, one of those juniors. Found Aaron Gray on the back line, and then Averts, big time smash right there, will find the Lynchburg side of the court. Such a tough swing. That, that's a really good shot. If, if you're Cassie Blackmore, you might just have to tip your cap to that. Back to that coach calling a timeout and, and then the, the server having trouble getting that in. I mean, do you tell your, your team, you know, after you've had one of those long breaks where you've been iced a little bit, just to make sure you get it in, aim at the middle, don't try to pick out a specific defender? I think if this was a little bit later in the set, you would see that. But 15-13, 15-12 at that timeout, I think you let them go back there and rip it. Two-point lead again for Avert. This has really been back and forth volleyball in every sense of the phrase. Tori Williamson had to make a long run to get to that one, still in play. Princess Salafu tried to roof it straight down. It came back in her direction, and she couldn't get there in time. Back to a three-point lead for the Cougars. That's one of those plays you take if you're Averett. You always tell your block, don't reach back. No, 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 until it works, and then yes, yes, yes. Allie Wilkerson, jump serve, really putting it nicely in the seam there. Watch out, big knock, did it find the back line? It did not. That's another Averett point. Now they are up to their biggest lead of the night again. Four-point advantage. Got to be careful here if you're the Hornets. That was Tori Williamson. She is moving well out there, getting set up just a little long. Wilkerson serve will go into the net, and the Hornets will gladly take that freebie. Two on again, Ava Meinhart and Jaina Leak. Leak will go back and serve. Not seeing as much of Bree Spainauer so far in this first set for the Hornets. She was the hot hand on Saturday in the victory. Cougars with another point, first to 20. That's one that oftentimes coaches and broadcasters and fans alike will talk about, getting to, getting to 20 first. And it certainly feels like you got the finish line in your sights now if you're the Avert Cougars. And a four-point lead as well. Blackmore over to Leak. Soft touch again by Meinhardt. There's a big swing by Emma Nash, but the Hornets up to, this, up to the task at the net. They'll stuff that one for their 17th point of the game. And it's Abby Barlow back in. That feels like a momentum swing for Lynchburg. Averett's got the last couple swings clean and down, and uh, putting up a roof there really shuts down the offense. Barlow stayed at the service line for a, a good little run earlier when she was back there. And the Hornets could use that now, down three. Leak did well to get to that one. Keo will roll it over. Setter shot that Lynchburg's ready for. KK from off court sends it back in. Cougars will try again and they'll get this one. I think it was Brenda Light on the right side with a big point, 21-17. Emma Nash to serve. Senior from Monroe, North Carolina. Over 640 kills in her career. She can score some points in some other ways as well. Another timeout on the court. We'll observe this one. A quick breather for us. It is ODAC Volleyball, Avert leading Lynchburg. 21-17 on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person, competing at a Division III level. It created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. 
and a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Another timeout for the Lynchburg Hornets. The first one worked out well. They ran off three straight points and tied the game. But since then, the Cougars have taken the advantage back. Emma Nash will send that one into the net. Uh, you know, Averts really played well, but that serving at times has let them down. We've seen two, I, I, the last two Lynchburg points, point 17 and 18, have both come from bad Avert serves. We have a, a serving sub now. Uh, something you normally see when you just want a little bit more defense in your back row. So not surprised to see the Hornets implement it here. Yeah, it's four serving errors for Avert, just one for Lynchburg. It's a 21-18 ball game. That ball is well out. Destiny McIntosh tried to push it over, and you could see a little frustration from her. I think she knew she missed the mark immediately. And Lynchburg back within two. That serve hits the tape. It's pulled out by Hope Parrish. Leak going to set up Keo, driven straight down, but still in play. Good shot there, and Emma Nash tried to attack from the back line and couldn't do it. Lynchburg back within one. After a great play to pull it out of the ceiling, you kind of want to just send that over. Love being aggressive if you're Averitt, but sometimes you got to take care of the ball. Well, we'll throw it into the well-placed timeout category again, and there's an ace. There's an ace, a little slight miscommunication on the back row, but she found the seam nicely there. Sydney Phillips in to serve, and gosh, you said this was a good move for Lynchburg. Sydney Phillips, the junior, coming in cold, hadn't played. How big is that? You've been sitting or standing. You maybe have been standing over there, and you've been shaking the arms and the shoulders, keeping it loose, but how tough is that to come off the bench in a close game and rip off some really good serves right there. Mentally very tough, um, but as soon as your name gets called by that coach, you're you're in there. Um, I'm sure she was hoping she'd get to do this in a, in a game like this, a conference opener 21-21. You'd love to hear your name get called by the coach. Number one, Sydney Phillips getting it done for Lynchburg. They are tied 21-21. See if the Cougars can rally a bit. Impressive after timeout performances for Lynchburg. Both times that Coach Gibbons has taken the timeout. That's got to make you feel good. Even that one was hard to handle, and it ends up resulting in another Lynchburg point. They're taking the lead back, 22-21. And now the Hornets are just three away. Now the question is, you have one timeout left if you're Averitt. Do you press the panic button? Do you let it ride? What happens here? Phillips has got the hot hand. Even the normally defensive sound, Aaron Gray had a tough time getting to that one. Leak gonna set up Keo. Oh, and that will find a spot. That's impressive right there. And that's that feel from KK, isn't it, Ryan? You get the sense that she wanted to take another big swing, but the set was a little tight to the net, so she went with it and just placed it down the line. One of those shots that makes her such a great player, so hard to play against, just has a great feel for the right time to hit those shots and win the swing away. It's a seven to one run for Lynchburg right now, seven one. You gotta be careful here if you're Lynchburg, the job is not done yet, you're two away. And you you were wondering, we were wondering aloud if Averitt would use their final timeout, they did. They'll try to rally back here down to 23-21. The crowd has gotten bigger in this first set. They've been kind of filing in. It's. I'd say it's as big as, as last week. Last week was a good crowd. Last week, we had the advantage. It was the first uh, on-campus athletic event of the semester. So a lot of the kids just wanted to get out and do something. But um, there's still a good crowd in here tonight. And I think we're going to get some great crowds all season long. And that goes for all the Hornet sports. And we've still got Sidney Phillips serving for Lynchburg. They prefer her to stay there and just finish this game out. McIntosh, nice rip there and good placement. Well done by Avert. They needed that point. They're back within one. Destiny McIntosh will sub out after a big one for the Cougars. Allie Wilkerson back in the ball game. It's Aaron Gray, the senior serving. 
Barlow, Blackmore, and Keo receiving for Lynchburg. It's KK to Leak. Keo, good shot there, dug out by Emma Nash. And it's a point for Lynchburg. Well, you got to like what Nash brings to the table, though. We, we talk about Kaylee Keo as being a five-tool player. Emma Nash is the same way for Avert. But just like that, the Hornets one away, 24-22. Maya Green to serve now. Here's another look at it. Nash with a pass that hit the rafters, and that's why the point didn't go the Cougars' way. Here's Maya Green. Oh, roofed by Lynchburg to win it. What a stuff by Miranda Cummings. Bree Spainauer was there as well. But the Lakeside Drive Roofing Company coming to the party here in Turner. Set one goes to Lynchburg, 25-22. Ryan and I are back with set two in just a moment on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Get your career in the game by enrolling in the University of Lynchburg MBA program with an emphasis in sport management. This program opens the doors to new possibilities for a variety of careers, from being an athletic director or working in athletic administration to working for professional organizations, your favorite team to running a local parks and rec department. And employers are increasingly requesting and preferring individuals who have postgraduate education specifically looking for an MBA. And so the University of Lynchburg Sport Management Concentration and the MBA program sets you up for success and it sets you apart from the many other people looking for jobs in the industry. Learn from winners. Here you will learn from professors and mentors who have spent their careers doing exactly what you want to do. Increase your marketability in an $83 billion industry. If you have a 3.0 GPA, the GMAT is waived. There's no application fee, admissions occurs on a rolling basis, and our online program is ideal for working adults. When you enroll in this program, you enroll in the opportunity to learn from the best of the best. Your professors have a wealth of experience working in the sport industry that they share with you in the classroom setting. Get in the game by getting your MBA with a sport management concentration at the University of Lynchburg. Let's see now, Hollywood, here I come. <laughs> Hey, I meant yeah. The real Lindsay Piper's here. <laughs> Autographs there later. Let's see. Another look at the play that ended set number one, and it was a big one of stuff from Miranda Cummings, the freshman, coming on strong for Lynchburg. They were strong at the net, five team blocks. Kyle and Ryan spending some time with you on a Tuesday night. Uh, what else jumps out at you statistically, Ryan, as we, we scan the box score here? We said serve and serve receive was going to be important. It looks like Lynchburg checked both those boxes in set one. Yeah, only one service error. You you couldn't dream of a better start for Lynchburg. Averett's got to be thinking that that first set was kind of self-inflicted. You have four service errors, and, and getting aced twice is definitely not what they thought they would uh, be in store for. Well, in between sets, I was just asking you as a, as a coaching philosophy or, or from a coaching standpoint, is that kind of the way you want to spin it to your team just as far as you want your team to think they're better than the other ball club, right? I mean, some people will play up that underdog role. I don't know that that's really of much value right here, don't, don't you think? No, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think playing the underdog <laughs> would, would do them much good here. But I do think it's a strategy to say, hey, guys, it's, it's what we're doing to ourselves. You know, it's, it was a three-point game, and we gave them six points. Mm, miss hit there by the Cougars, and there's one that does feel a little self-inflicted. That was Hope Parrish that just kind of came off the hand weird. I mean, the set might not have been perfect, but I'm sure she'd love to have it back. And Lynchburg jumps out to the one-nothing lead. Maya Green, the southpaw, sends it in. 
There's one that's out of play and another one that, that you could argue feels self-inflicted. So back to the coaching point, I'll ask you again, do you tell your attackers, hey, let's just make sure you get it, get it down. Don't try to pick out lines. Don't try to get cute. Let's get some in play and, and force them to have to receive a bet like Lynchburg did there. And Blackmore was unable to one hand, one hand that one back in play. To a certain degree, you also, as a coach, don't want to make any excuses for them. You could say, oh, it's first ODAC game, it's a weeknight game, all those things. But at the end of the day, Lynchburg is dealing with the, with the same circumstances and just handling the pressure much better. Seem to be thus far. Line drive serve there. That was handled well. Kaylee Keough, she was far from the net and still let it fly right there. This one will get tipped out. Cummings got hands on it. There was that tool to block situation by Avert. And, and maybe that's what I mean more so rather than trying to go down the line or go for that deep corner on a kill, maybe you do just try to get it off the blocker's hands once in a while when you have gone out of bounds sometimes. There's one that will hit the rafters. Keo with another good swing from distance away. There's the Lynchburg block up front. Emma Nash will try again, and she... The uh, libero called for a back row attack mm. there. You cannot handle the ball inside the 10-foot line. Uh, with your hands instead of your platform if you're the libero. Yeah, yeah, you and I talked about that briefly last week, but that's one that we could run down a little bit more because there are some rules for that libero that don't apply for others. How about Blackmore with one hand there to keep that one alive? What a pickup. You can tell that Lynchburg has mm. the energy. There was a nice setter attack to just dump that one in. That was pretty saucy from the Cougars. And it ties the game up 3-3. But yeah, back to the libero. Uh, run that down for everybody again. And when I say everybody, I mean myself speci specifically, but maybe other folks that don't know. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll fill you in. On that white line, you see that 10-foot line, the attack line, you'll hear it called a lot. The libero can only use their platform inside that 10-foot line. Using their hands, that's going to be called every single time. Cougars pick up the lead now, 4-3. the advantage, and it's the senior Emma Nash. She'll fire that one in. Lynchburg picks it up. Maya Green going to the far right corner. That's taken care of. There's a big swing from Rachel Green from Avert. Nash will send it over, Maya Green there. Now Blackmore. Rally continues, best one of the second set so far. Easy handle by, by Maya Green. And there's a ball that sort of got mistipped by, I believe, Ava Meinhardt again. No, Bree Spainauer. I'm sorry, Bree Spainauer. A set up Cummings down the middle, and Avert sends that one back. Destiny McIntosh, middle on middle right there, returned to sender. And now Avert's gone out to a three-point advantage. Really one of the first swings we've seen out of the middle for either team here. It's just, it's such a tough set to run if your passes aren't perfect. Miranda Cummings was perfect on Saturday against Dickinson. Seven for seven. Seven kills on seven attacks. And there's another one that Emma Nash will sneak by the tandem block of Cummings and Spainauer. Just kind of slid off the arms and down. Four-point advantage for Avery. They got out to a four-point lead in set one, and Lynchburg came storming back. A couple well-placed timeouts from Coach Gibbons. Good shot there by Bree Spainauer. Emma Nash will return the favor to the near right corner. Looks like the Cougars are getting some momentum, greasing the gears a little bit here. They seem to be getting the better of things right now off to a five-point lead. Allie Wilkerson at the service line, handled by Keo. Will go to the far side, tipped over. That was Ava Meinhardt. That one out of bounds again. And now the lead up to six for the Avert Cougars. I'd seen an early timeout. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it felt like it was coming, and there it was from Coach Hannah Gibbons. It's Avert nine, Lynchburg three. We're back in just a moment here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. 
private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go on a personal trainer and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. Well, the timeouts paid major dividends for Lynchburg in set one. Let's see if the same thing happens in set two. Tori Williamson stuffed. Free ball coming over from Blackmore. Cougars will pick out Rachel Green. Rachel Green had six total attacks in the first set. Just the one kill, but they're getting Rachel Green involved, and she'll get another point for Avert. They now lead 10-3. What's so important with Averitt while you have this lead is just to establish your hitters. Uh, after set one, Lynchburg might be feeling a little more confident. They have a grasp on things, and Averitt needs to just address every option they have. Crafty little play there by Maya Green, get a much needed point for Lynchburg. Yeah, Averitt's got so many weapons offensively. You know, Rachel Green really wasn't one of the names to look out for. You just. Just over one kill per set, but she has been very active. Rachel Green will swing it right there from the near right side. Lynchburg handled it, but a misplay on the set there. We'll Double, seeing, seeing that called less and less across college volleyball. Um, really, as long as you make an athletic move and it, it seems to come out clean, the refs are letting a lot go. That's the second double we've seen tonight, though. And is that one uh, as Dayton Moore We'll serve it. Another sophomore for Avert. They've got quite a few sophomores as well. Uh, I guess that's one where it would pay to know your refs a little bit, too, to, to know what each individual guy or gal kind of watches a little more closely than others. Yeah, some of them are going to call it tighter than others. What all refs do a great job of is watching warm-ups, watching hitting lines, seeing what each setter is kind of their standard and meeting them there. Great dig by Keo. This is a good rally. Green will pop it over. Set coming from Dayton Moore. Emma Nash didn't get the complete rip, but got enough of it. Tori Williamson picking out a spot. Look at him go out there. Both teams laying it all on the line. Let's see if Lynchburg can end it right here. Bree Spainauer, oh man. She got it sent right back into her chin. And that was a rally to remember. Cougars come out on top. It's just one point, but Felt bigger than that. That was back and forth and really a great sequence. 12-4. 12-4 is the Cougar advantage. And this is the biggest of the night. Princess Salafu, haven't called her name as much for Lynchburg, but in there right now. And a miss hit from Sydney Mounts will get Lynchburg a point. So both teams really using some rotations and some substitutions I guess, Ryan, that maybe I'm the only one caught off guard. But just when you look at the stats, uh, you kind of expect one thing. When you watch the previous games, you kind of expect one thing. And both teams have maybe changed it up just a little bit. Overpass that Princess Salafu sends straight down. So there's back-to-back -back points for Lynchburg. Maybe a little mini rally coming here with Jaina Leak serving for the Hornets. Yeah, both teams look into something different than we've seen throughout the season. But both these teams so talented top to bottom. It gives them the freedom. When one thing isn't working, they have plan B, C, and D lined up. We'll talk about the different systems that you can run because it's it's not always going to be the same thing every night, correct? It, depending on your setters, you can run a 5-1, meaning you have one setter, or a 6-2, um, like you're seeing to here tonight where you have two setters. Uh, six twos tend to lead 10 to uh, lend themselves to some more offense. 
uh, while a 5-1 is a little more defensive oriented. And I guess that's the, 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 the trait of a good coach is knowing when to go to each specific system, right? It's all about personnel and, uh, and knowing what your team needs. Like you said, a good coach will have their finger on the pulse and uh, know when, when to make that call. 13-7, little mini fight back continues for Lynchburg. Destiny McIntosh, healthy cut, but long. And now this is, maybe feels like more like a full-blown rally right here for the Hornets as they have clawed back within five. Abby Barlow in and serving the sophomore from Manita, Virginia. Not too far down the road. I throw her in that local category. Serve received by Aaron Gray. And there's a big rip by the Cougars to get another much-needed point. Hope Parrish putting it away. Yeah, Abby Barlow is one of, one of the many uh, great float serves that Lynchburg has. Uh, balls that just drop out of the sky before you know it. And uh, Averett doing a really good job of handling them, actually. Good serve that time that Lynchburg could not handle from Aaron Gray, the senior from Virginia Beach, and that'll get another timeout from the Lynchburg Hornets who trail 15 to eight. I'm Kyle Haney, my broadcast partner is Ryan Turner. Uh, just looking ahead, Ryan, it'll be a short trip on Saturday for Lynchburg. They'll just head cross town over to Randolph to take on Trinity in a neutral site match, and then Next week, Wednesday, September 20th, it's on the road to Randolph-Macon, who's always one of the best in the ODAC. That'll be a very stiff test. And then our next home game for the Lynchburg volleyball team will be in a couple weeks, Tuesday, September 26th, hosting Bridgewater. So it's interesting because you get over half your season, it feels like, played in the month of September. It's very important, but it does end up being more of a marathon. You can't put too much weight into one game or one set, but you'd really like to be playing at a high level all season long. But you look at what uh, what you guys did last year where you played great in the month of October. I think it was nine and three. You had that run where you won eight out of nine or something like that. I mean, how important is that to you as a coach to try to peak at the right time? I mean, yes, you want the most out of your team year round, but you do have to keep in mind it is a long season. It means everything, get hot at the right time is always what you're looking for. But what I like about the scheduling coming up is that you said that they have non-conference coming up, which means they get a game to focus on whatever happens here tonight, fix it, and then take on Randolph-Macon, which is a huge ODAC game. 16-8, Cougars doubling up the Hornets at the moment. Still Aaron Gray serving for Avert University, who has won four out of the last five against Lynchburg. And really, when they were in the USA South, they were one of the all-time best. Four NCAA appearances. How about that what one say. from Cassie Blackmore? That'll stop the oh. conversation in their tracks, but she's not going to be able to get to this ball. You like the enthusiasm that Lynchburg's playing with, but right now it just feels like Avert has got the advantage and they're playing some pretty good volleyball. This is this is what you talked about. Avert felt that a lot of their damage was self-inflicted, and they have cleaned up some of those errors, and it's showing in set two. Yeah, if you remember the start of the set, they led with three errors right out of the gate, and they have totally flipped the switch. As, as I say that, service yeah, error. <laughs> service error. Great read by Blackmore. I mean, that was so close to, to let that go by. That's impressive. I thought Lynchburg was very good about that when we were last working together last week against Southern Virginia. It just seemed like they did not play too many of those out balls, really with the court awareness. And I'm sure that one is tough to work on. Obviously, you're, you're working on in your scrimmages, but it's, uh, it's got to be nice when you make the right decision. Back-to-back -back points for the Hornets, 17-10. It's Sidney Phillips back out there serving. We saw this in set one. You could really make a strong argument that she was the key player, the MVP of set one. A really for, tough serve. Yeah, the jump serve comes in with some velocity, fairly flat as well. Lynchburg won't get to it, so Sidney Phillips will have to wait to serve again. And here come more subs anyway. Phillips is going to come out. Princess Salafu coming in. Libero, Cassie Blackmore checking back in. Averett will make a few changes of their own. Here comes Rachel Green.
And it's an eight-point Avert Cougar lead. Lynchburg was really good against Dickinson on Saturday. That was a game up at Eastern Mennonite University. Lynchburg won the first two sets, then kind of a blip in the radar, set three. And Hannah Givens had to rally the team a bit there, and Lynchburg ended up getting a four-set victory. We talked about Avert had been going in the wrong direction. They've lost now 10 straight sets. They're sporting a nine-point advantage right now. Haley Keo with another great decision there. That is just such good feel and awareness to know just to just to go with the changeup right over top of the block to that void and get a point. It really is what makes her such a threat on offense. Is just she she does what every coach would like their players to do without <laughs> having to ask her to do it. Impressive stuff from KK. Kaylee Keo, 5'8 sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Cougars get a good look, but it's out of play. Another nice read by Abby Barlow. And Lynchburg back within seven, 19-12. There's a shot at fourth year head coach Hannah Givens. Serve that hits the tape. Watch out for Emma Nash. No, excuse me, Allie Wilkerson. That was sizzling off the right hand and no chance for the Hornets to return. That's the danger of Averett. Either team, really, not just Averett. If Lynchburg or Averett can establish that middle, this game will really open up on offense. Kaylee Gentry to serve. Uh, talk about that middle a little bit more, because I think a lot of times when we've seen the hitters, they seem to want to attack down the lines or, or in that deep opposite corner. We've talked about that some, and we've seen that. But um, going down the middle, how easy is that to do for an attacker? Not easy. Um, it's something you need the whole team on board with. It starts with the pass, the set, and then the swing, but it really freezes the other team's blocker. Keo, uh, good rip there. Thought maybe she got a fingertip, but nope, it's out of play and a point for Avert. Twenty-one twelve is what the scoreboard shows. Abby Barlow with a high one over to Green. KK again, similar shot, similar result. Point for Lynchburg. It's another one where, I, you know, I pointed out last week when a player has a hot hand, <laughs> seems like a great idea to keep feeding them when possible. You don't want to become too predictable for a defense, right? But sometimes somebody's just got such a good look and a good rhythm, you really have to keep going to them when possible, don't you? Uh-oh, misplay there from... Cassie Blackmore. You sure do, and it, as a coach, you love whoever has the hot hand going back to serve. You just think you have a great opportunity to really rally off some points. 22-13. Lynchburg has Morgan Clark in the game now. We saw Tiana Artis for just a brief moment. A couple plays there. Coach Givens is going her bench a little bit. And now this one, the referee will talk to Coach Givens a bit about the sub, but I think we're okay. Yep, just asking for a new floor captain. So who, who is that going to be? It could be anybody, I guess, right? Could be anyone. It's typically your setter, uh, just someone who's on the floor. By rule, they're the only one who should be talking to an official. Uh, sometimes, more often than not, you'll see a, a group of six players <laughs> going to talk to an official. Right. 23-13, Avert by 10. Cougars are probably going to win the second set here, barring a major, major comeback from Lynchburg. But there's a point to start it. Princess Salafu hustling back out. Middle blockers exchange there as Miranda Cummings exits the game. It's nice for Lynchburg that Cummings and Salafu bring some similar things to the table just as far as their games. Oh, there's a big shot from Emma Nash, another termination. Again, that, that middle connection is so huge. Those, you want those pogo stick kind of jumpers for your middles. Uh, and you know, we, we're so far removed from people actually knowing what a pogo stick is, we might have to explain it, but um, maybe folks can just go look it up if they don't know. But it seems like those middles don't need the big long run up to take off. There was a good takeoff there and a ball that will hit the rafters briefly and come down and lead to a Lynchburg point. That was Bree Spainauer starting to get involved. Nice hard shot from the far right side. 
But yeah, the pogo stick jumpers, when you describe a jumper like that, it means they don't have to load up or go for the big, the big run up like sometimes your, your pin hitters, you know, they can levitate, but they have to take multiple steps to get into it. Whereas your middles, they just seem to spring up. There was Princess Salafu in the middle, causing some problems on the block. Back-to-back -back points for Lynchburg. They still trail 24-16. Salafu and Cummings, they both move so well side to side as well, and they can get in on those tandem blocks. They'll try to shut down Destiny McIntosh, but not to be. McIntosh terminates the point and the set for Avert, 25-16. Cougars roll in set number two. We're even up at one apiece here. Set three on the way next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Look what you're missing. Coaches always made sure that the student comes first because not everyone's going to become a professional athlete. So they make sure that we will do great in academics. I knew that would only open the door to my future. And I'm really excited to start my dream program for physical therapy. CAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic and Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. There's a look at our crowd today, getting into it, having some fun on a Tuesday in September, and it's volleyball season. Avert and Lynchburg tied up one set apiece. Hornets take set number one. Set two goes to the Cougars. Uh, Ryan, we were talking about Avert really looked a lot better in that set, and they're using that middle attack to great advantage. Yeah, it's something that really just, just busts apart a defense. Um, when the other opposing middle blocker has to respect that attacker, uh, you end up with a lot of solo blocks on the outsides, your right sides, and really just freezes the defense. I love how Avert is spreading the wealth. Emma Nash leads the way with 20 attacks. Uh, but Hope Parrish has 13, Rachel Green has 13, Sydney Mounts has 11, Destiny McIntosh 9. So they really are being pretty unpredictable for the Lynchburg block. Here comes Blackmore over to Bree Spainauer, and this one, wow. <laughs> what an effort there. Avert defensively, you have to admit that. There's a middle attack from Princess Salafu, also handled by the Cougars. Wow. 
finally, Lynchburg able to penetrate the defense there and get a point. That was hard fought. Yeah, we see Lynchburg now establishing the middle. Is it a monkey see, monkey do? Or, I mean, obviously, Lynchburg had that in the strategy before now. You don't just randomly decide to go to that. But I don't know, maybe when you see another team having success, could it sway you a bit as a coach? It definitely does as a, as a setter. Um, there's a lot of times if, if what you're doing is working, not to change. Um, and Lynchburg was feeding their pins quite a bit. And uh, the second set didn't go their way. So maybe they decided it was time for a change. Jaina Leak setter for Lynchburg, laid out, but couldn't slide the spatula underneath that one. Tie ball game, 1-1. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the setters because it seems like on those dumps when the setter will try to make an attack, you see your counterpart do it and you kind of think, oh, yeah, maybe I do need to try that at some point as well. KK flying high but had to send a soft one over. Here comes Emma Nash, same thing. Leak will get to that. Now Blackmore, Meinhardt just couldn't quite tip it over. Number 16, the freshman for Lynchburg. She's had a few moments there. Ryan, where it just seems like she's kind of caught in between the big swing and the change up and, and you end up not being able to execute either one. A lot of times that's just a lot going on in your head and uh, playing tight, uh, just worried about making a mistake instead of being go with the flow. Gray laid out and got to a nice one there for Avert. You're seeing why she's one of the best in the conference and then another termination over there for Rachel Green. Rachel Green really swinging it well. Third kill of the evening for the Cougars. They lead three to one. Number one, Rachel Green, a sophomore. Averett's got four of them. Lynchburg has nine second years. Here's one of them right there. Kaylee Keough off the mark, wide right, 4-1. Averett on top. We've touched on a few of those little, those little volleyball sayings and terms that you hear. This one will be off the mark. Another service error for Avert. But the other one you got to tell folks a little bit about, too, that you hear is when a team is in system or out of system and how you still want to be able to attack even when you're out of system, but you'd obviously prefer to be in system. Yeah, that's a really great thing to bring up. Uh, both teams doing a great job of taking out the setter. Uh, any free ball, any roll shot, you want to send to the other team's setter to get them what we call out of system meaning somebody other than that setter has to distribute that ball. Cougars lead 5-2 in the blue jerseys with the, with the gold trim there for Avert. Lynchburg in the home whites. Nice layout by Blackmore. There's the hit from Meinhardt. Looked like she had more conviction there to, as far as going ahead and taking a big swing on it, but unfortunately into the net. Now she'll sub out for Maya Green. Bree Spainauer back in the game as well for Lynchburg. Really good set there by Jane Leak, reversing the flow. When the whole court is going to the left and you can push that ball back to the right, always going to end up one-on-one. -on -one. Nash will take one and three. Got a little tip, and then I think it was... Misplayed by Bree Spainauer slightly at the net. Another point for Avert. The Cougars are doing a really good job of running off two, three, four, sometimes these little five-point runs even, Ryan, whereas Lynchburg just hasn't had a big one since set number one. Of course, the big one in set number one came when Lynchburg was down 2017. They won nine out of the next ten. Yeah, I would, I would say they're kind of quiet points to, to your point, actually. Yeah, every time you think it's got to be tied, you look to the scoreboard, and uh, and they're up two or three, and you just you don't remember it. Another point for the Cougars. They're on top seven three, so it's another one of these quiet little runs. I think going back to set number one, Lynchburg won won eight out of nine. The math wouldn't have worked out if they if they won uh, if they won nine points. Well, I guess if if we went to the extra extra points there. But anyway, let's not get into too much. Mathematics here as Lynchburg finally does get a point. They now trail by three. Did a great job there. Lynchburg did playing to the whistle. Uh, Avery thought that ball was down. Uh, Cassie Blackmore made a great move, and uh, they get the point because of it. Tori Williamson back in the game at the net for Lynchburg. Here's a serve by Kaylee Kia. Mm, that was rifle fire coming from the far right side. 
using the whole court to her advantage. Emma Nash, the senior, over 645 kills now. They just keep adding up for this talented player from Monroe, North Carolina. She's sixth in the ODAC in points, Ryan. And, and, and you look at all the players on that list, they're all going to be similar to the degree where they can kill, they can serve, and they'll get a few blocks in there as well to get some points. Yeah, Cougars really with great energy right now. Nice job to defend the high-flying Bree Spainauer. And now it'll be another timeout for the Lynchburg Hornets. They trail 8-4. to four. We're knotted up one set apiece here inside Turner Gymnasium. Kyle Haney and Ryan Turner spending some time with you on a Tuesday night. Uh, Ryan, you follow all the Lynchburg social media accounts, right? You're of a social course. media savvy guy. And now as the head coach for the Lynchburg men's volleyball team, which we probably should talk about a bit more in this broadcast. Ryan has been named the brand new head coach for the brand new men's program here at Lynchburg. But uh, I was saying, as the new men's coach, you got to be social media savvy. You got to you got to be on there talking about your team, and uh, you, uh, the recruiting has already started for you. So you you got to work all those avenues, don't you? It's unbelievable how many kids want to do their recruiting now through social media. Um, the younger generation, they, they're able to see an amazing graphic that our, our Lynchburg team puts out, and immediately they're drawn to it, give it a like, message the coach, and go from there. It's really one of the strong points of Lynchburg is being able to push out those super high-quality graphics and, uh, and give the fans some behind-the-scenes access. Yeah. Shout-out to Sam Rice, our director tonight. And uh, we'll run down the rest of the crew here as we get later on into the evening. We're going to have at least four sets. It could be, it could be a five-setter. There's Bree Spainauer getting involved. Maybe not a point that she's going to remember, but very, very needed for Lynchburg. Really, they're all needed right now as Avert just kind of, it, it feels like they have the momentum. And I, I know we've said that more than once because it's felt like that more than once. Destiny McIntosh, hard strike. Lynchburg tried to scramble and ended up rearranging some furniture over there on the far side, but it's another Cougar point. Avert on top, 10-5. Yeah, you mentioned Avert just seems like they have this energy. It all starts with who's at the service line right now. Erin Gray is just a leader back there, and she gets balls up that they don't expect to come up. So much talent from the younger group for Avert, but those three seniors, they really bring a whole lot to the table. How about that stuff at the line? The Cougars are bringing it at the net. They're bringing it at the service line and everywhere. Sydney mounts, I think, sending that one back in the wrong direction for Lynchburg. Morgan Clark checking in for uh, KK. Yeah, Clark played a bit in the second set. Well, we're seeing Hannah Givens go through the roster a little bit, searching for some combinations. I'm sure that's purely defensive. It's also long-term. Uh, a player like KK to be out there if this game does go five sets, it's a lot. It's a lot of reps, and uh, you want her on offense for sure. Clark took the serve there, and Princess Salafu ends up taking the point, tipping it over, 11-6. Now they served at Clark there. Was that intentional because she just came off the bench? You want to try to test the sub early? Is that probably the method there? Yeah, I don't know a, a coach in the country who wouldn't, uh, <laughs> who wouldn't say serve the new person. Sometimes it works out, and uh, sometimes you get a perfect pass like we saw from Morgan there. Jane Elite now serving for Lynchburg. Nice line drive that will get Aver out of sorts briefly. Leak will take that one and spin it away. Aaron Gray. There's Morgan Clark with a high ball and ends up being a free ball sent over by Ava Meinhart. There's the middle attack again for Avert, and it pays off for him. They are just running that very nicely. Sydney mounts with a big hit coming down Main Street. Avert, they're actually running what we call a stack. As you can see, the right side coming over. The blockers have to communicate just like man-to-man -man defense, who has who, and uh, got lost there in the transition. Morgan Clark gets another one sent her way. Bench has to scramble oh. out of there, but Lynchburg's going to win the point. That could be something to, to rally behind. Our fans are certainly loving it. The bench 
had to get out of the way. Evasive action, and Lynchburg ends up winning it. 12-7, still a deficit, but a little bit of wind in the sails for the Hornets. It's just a fun play, too. You're not going to get that in other sports. I guess baseball, you can go over and catch one in front of the dugout, Ryan, but the play's pretty much over there. In, in volleyball, you have to continue playing. And as you said, Lynchburg's done a pretty good job of playing to the whistle. Mm, good wow. little dump there that Lynchburg handled. KK will get one sent back, but she keeps it alive. Tapped over by Leak. Avert's going to try again. Big hit there that Lynchburg got to. Princess Salafu helping out on the block. Gray will free ball one over. Here comes Keo. There's a shot that Lynchburg needed on the back line. Talk about that point right there, Ryan. There was so much going on. You could spend the entire rest of the set talking about that point. Yeah, that's that's really great. Lynchburg responding with a play of their own. You see KK didn't go all the way out to the pin, knew that set was going to be inside, and the, uh, the blocker was not expecting that one. Barlow sends it in for Lynchburg. There's Wilkerson. Hornets can keep it alive. Blackmore sends it back over. Avert attacking again. Leak gets that one over to Blackmore. Keogh's going to have to roll it. Nice layout by Aaron Gray. And here we go again, Lynchburg blocking. Another big knock, we're still playing. Leak trying to slide one in between the defense to the donut. There's a shot handled by Leak. Now it's Ava Meinhart will push it over. Marathon rally right here. Princess Salafu, that'll get handled by the Cougars. Another big shot. Leak is up to the task again, digging it out. Oh, oh and Keo will drop one in. Such an incredible rally. I was surprised to see it end that way. Maybe the Cougars just ran out of gasoline on that one. It was a marathon point. Man, the Lynchburg block looks so energized right now. They're up on every single ball. Impressive stuff here from Lynchburg. Mm. That was on the far sideline there from Barlow. Good placement. See if Lynchburg can get something out of it. Kaylee Keough got blocked. Salafu kept it in. Hornets will send it over. They trail by three, and that time Barlow's shot to that far sideline was wide left and out of play. The right idea. She was trying to take out the setter, just played a little too close to the line. This has been a really, really fun sequence here in set three. Set one featured the strong Lynchburg comeback. Set two was really more of a dominating performance from Avert. Set three started that way, but it feels very much back and forth right now. Leak has been getting to everything back there. Meinhardt got sent back in her lap, and that's going to be a point for Avert. 14-9. Cougars with back-to-back -back sneaky points again. Avert just feels steady, you know, other than the other than the end of the first set where they kind of kicked away the lead late. Other than that, they just, just kind of steady, keep coming after you. What a placement there. KK does it again down that near left sideline in a perfect spot. Makes that so hard to defend when you're, you're playing defense in the middle back. You want to get into the court, but when she can push that ball behind you, it's really hard to go and track down. Princess Salafu to serve for Lynchburg. Hasn't served much tonight. Wow. Good job to let that one go. Miranda Cummings asking for a tip. Entire Lynchburg team thought it was tip. The referees disagree, and that's a point for Avert. They now lead by five, 15-10. Those are the points that Avert's getting right now that just seem impossible, like scooping the ball out of the net and, uh, and Lynchburg unfor and unforced error there. Wilkerson serving. For Avert, Leak will get to this one. Keo going to try to line up her eighth kill of the night, but instead, that is out of bounds. And it's another point for the Cougars, 16-10. Correction, keo has got 10 kills already, but that one didn't find the floor for the Hornets. And there's another timeout for Lynchburg. Coach Hannah Givens is using them. You and I talked about social media during the last timeout. So what do we talk about now? Uh, you're still on the recruiting trail. And uh, give folks the, the timeline and everything because we're not going to see volleyball, men's volleyball in this gym this January. It'll be the next January, January 2025, which seems 
like it's far away, but really it's right around the corner. Doesn't that seem crazy to say 2025? It, it does. It does. Um, yeah, but the, the great thing is, is that with fall ball coming up, I mean, we'll have practices in this gym, but no, the fans won't be in here until 2025. Um, but our, our current recruits are all high school seniors right now. They're enjoying their senior year and in, uh, in club season, traveling across the country and uh, making their college decisions as we speak. I think it's going to be so cool to see a program start from the ground up. And you, and you sort of did this with the beach volleyball. You, you were obviously a big part of that. Um, now, you know, it's interesting because I was going to say – it feels like already with indoor volleyball, that's just an extension of that. But really, there's not a lot of crossover. We've got Landon Spots and, uh, and Kaylee Keo. I think, are the only ones on the indoor team that also play beach. And is that right? Am I getting that right? As of last year, I'll be interested to see how many freshmen on the indoor team decide to play yeah. beach. Well, we can get into the nuances and the differences there. But let's, uh, let's send our full attention back to this game. It is set three. Teams are tied 1-1 to 16-10. Avert lead right now. We got another really good rally developing. KK, good swing, but out of play again. When she goes long right there, do you think it's she's trying to tool the block and just missing, or could it just be a miss hit? Could be a number of things. I, I wouldn't doubt that she's a smart enough player to be trying to tool the block. The other thing is she might not be getting the same snap or the same elevation off her jump that she might have gotten in set one. Well, and you talked about taking Keo out for a breather for reasons like that. You want to be fresh. If you do go five sets, you want that vertical to be where you think it's going to be, especially at a key moment. So all part of the plan here for Coach Hannah Givens. Rotating some different faces in. Nice one there by Jane Elite. That was crafty to send it right to the hole for a big point. That's a lot of confidence from Jane Elite in Landon Spots who just checked in to set her right away. Uh, tells you just how much they trust each other. Yeah, we were just talking about Landon Spots. 5'7", sophomore from Bridgewater, Virginia. Her father is actually the baseball coach at Bridgewater College. And she is one of those beach stars and an indoor star as well. Destiny McIntosh will run one down for Avert. Kinsley Stevens, the setter, actually got it over. 17-11. Cougars by six. Cummins got a piece of it, then a second ball. piece, digging it out at the net for Lynchburg. Boy, the entire sequence happened in a phone booth. Lynchburg with another block. They'll try again, and finally they win the point. Firm stuff up front by the freshman Miranda Cummings. She was all over it with those net joust and keeping it alive for Lynchburg. Yeah, the whole gym holds their breath. You see that ball is in between on the net, and uh, you just hope that you're going to push harder than the other blocker. Maya Green serving. Stevens will set up what Rachel up. Green. One-hander there from Blackmore. She's done that a couple times tonight, but that one might have been the best of the bunch. Barlow got knocked over. Back set over to Spainauer. Aver hit it a couple times with the same player, and that's another outstanding point for Lynchburg. That's one you put on the highlight reel there, and the Hornets need it. Yeah, we'll get a second. Look at that. How about the one hand just sticking it out? Barlow runs it down. Green sends it back over. Special stuff. This Lynchburg back row has no quit in them. And there's Barlow again. That one tight to the net. Blackmore is going to free ball it over. Good spot, though. Maya Green with a dig. Now Blackmore. Spots took a rip. Kinsley Stevens to Nash. Play on. Another marathon rally coming up, baby. Spainauer says, uh-uh. She got the fastball in there for a point. Volume getting, getting raised here inside Turner. Fans are showing their approval. They should be. This is a, this is a good sequence here for Lynchburg. Heart and soul kind of a sequence in the last four or five points. Let's see if they can keep it going. Stevens sets up Nash. Good dig by Barlow. Spainauer. It's going to have to get it over. Here comes Nash again. Emma Nash out in. Slight piece by Lynchburg. Mm, Officials called a touch there. What's difficult, the line judge whose call it is is right there, said no touch. The up ref can overrule him, though. Yeah, Hannah Givens is eyeballing that up ref. 
there's there's really nothing else to compare it to in sports. I mean, you would you would never see the the first base umpire call a ball or a strike for the <laughs> home plate umpire. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, great point. Great point. I mean, it's humorous, but it's a, it's an excellent point. 18-14, our scoreboard here inside Turner says. Cougars by four. Emma Nash, or excuse me, Dayton Moore, rather, pounding the volleyball, waiting to let it fly. Now she does. That's a little do drop in serve that Blackmore had to lay out for. Barlow up to Maya Green. Spainauer terminates the point. And the volume comes alive. The volume comes up again. The gym comes alive. Hornet fans are into it. Hornet players are into it. Lynchburg might want to ask for a lineup check here. A little bit of confusion who's going back there to serve. Well, that's a good one. You can, you can get penalized for being out of rotation, but it's free to ask the referee what, what we're supposed to be in, right? Correct. The only thing you might not want to ask is just because the momentum seems to be on your side right now. To slow it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. see. Spot serving. Another wall up there by Miranda Cummings, the freshman. Going to go to Bree Spainauer. Same spot, same result. Fist pump. Those six on the floor are into it. The bench is into it. Hornets are coming back. They're within two. 18-16. Yeah. Again, sorry to cut you off there. We have another non-starter serving and really sparked this rally. Landon Spots is, it, is the one this time. It was Sidney Phillips in set number one. But yeah, Coach Givens going to the bench. Blackmore stumbled going for that one. And that's an Averett point, 19-16. Cougars probably feel like they needed that. They can breathe a sigh of relief. And they'll get the very talented Emma Nash back to serve. But yeah, Landon Spots, she'll check out for Kaylee Keogh right now. Great stuff off the bench for Lynchburg from her and Sidney Phillips. We've seen Morgan Clark a bit. Coach Givens going to the bench in a big spot too. It's paid off both times. It sure has. First conference game. And you know it's a marathon. We've said that. But you'd really like to get that first one. Get off on the good foot. Spain hour stuff. Lynchburg's going to try again. There's a nice rip from the opposite side by Tori Williamson. The freshman has been involved a little bit. I would argue that was her best swing of the night and in a major place as well. Lynchburg back within two. 5'10 freshman from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Tori Williamson, excellent Ace. serve from Cassie Blackmore. Throw the hands to the sky, Lynchburg within one, 19-18. Averett holding on to timeouts here. Their coach, Olivia Earls, is one of the more vocal ones you'll see. She's always on her feet, pacing the sideline, yelling out instructions, encouragement. Nash will handle that serve. There's a hit from outside the pin by Destiny McIntosh. Keo will bump one over. Nice placement there that Maya Green got her left hand to but then it caromed off in a direction that wasn't good for Lynchburg. 2018, Avert first to 20. They actually did this in set one and ended up surrendering the lead. Lynchburg's looking for something similar here in set three. We are knotted at one apiece. We're going at least four tonight. Kaylee Keough takes the serve. Tori Williamson again, kept alive by Avert. Good job by Spainauer and Salafu at the net for Lynchburg. Aaron Gray will toss one over. What a dive there by Blackmore. Tori Williamson, that one out of play. 21-18. Cougars by three. Aaron Gray serving for Avert. They've really stuck with this rotation quite a bit now. The Avert Cougars, that is. Green will set up Spain Hour. That one wide left. Back to back points that Avert has gotten because of balls out of play from Lynchburg hitters. 22 18. Hornets down four. Again, if you're Avert, there's no one you would rather have back at the service line right now as broadcast <laughs> is jinx. 
Oh, Ryan Turner sends his apologies to the Aaron Gray fans. And I'm one of them. She's a great player. She leads the conference in digs. Over 1,500 in her career. Kinsley Stevens has got over 1,500 assists in her career. There's some players on this Avert team that have put together some outstanding resumes. 22-19, leak to serve for Lynchburg. Overpass, Salafu takes care of it, and Lynchburg's back within two. Princess Salafu. She's a senior. She is the lone senior for this Lynchburg team. She's really developed into a leader for the ball club. And you said she was so soft-spoken when she came in. It's just fantastic to see her come into her own. She'll take the first one there. Second one, Williamson. That sends it off the block and out of play. Lynchburg point. Hornets are back within one. You're starting to feel it again, and there's that timeout. We wondered if Averett would hold on to it. They're going to use one here. Uh, run us through the timeout huddles for both teams. Lynchburg's got that momentum back. They got to try to keep the energy in their huddle, and Avert maybe trying to calm things down just a bit over there. If I'm Lynchburg, honestly, I don't want to jinx anything. If I'm the coach, I'm going to let those girls talk about what they want to talk about because it is working right now. Um, and if I'm Averitt, I'm using this timeout as we see them break only 15 seconds after calling it. This is just to ice the server. They're telling their girls, hey, push three points here. We'll go on to set four and be fine. We've seen the, the icing the server work. The server in question this time is Jaina Leak, sophomore from Williamsburg, Virginia. She had a good day Saturday against Dickinson. 17 assists, two kills herself, three aces, seven digs. Stat sheet was full from the sophomore, number seven, Jaina Leak, ready to go here after a potential cool down. Lynchburg within one. 22-21. Green got down on the knees to push that one over. High flying stuff from Williamson and then that one will sneak down the net for a much needed Avert point, 23-21. Cougars up by two, within two of taking set number three. I just noticed something here, Kyle. Lynchburg, we mentioned it last game, Running out of subs, we see Maya Green staying in the front row instead of Bree Spainauer, who would normally be checking in for her. Yeah, we mentioned limited on the subs. Libero's different. Bree Spainauer climbing the ladder and throwing it down. Lynchburg within one again, 23-22. Great swing from Tori there. Oh, Tori Williamson, yes. Thank you, Ryan. I said don't be afraid to tell me when I've been wrong. And I it know, was such a good call, though. I know, and I've been wrong many other times, but you've been too nice, so I appreciate you. We need to be nice and give Tori Williamson the credit. Williamson to serve as well. Pretty good one there. Dug out by Gray. Strong at the net again by Ooh. Salafu. Watch out. Evasive action needed. That was a friendly fire on the Lynchburg side, but we'll play on. Kaylee Keough <laughs> snuck that one over. Handled nicely by the Cougars. There's a shot that Williamson couldn't get to. Cassie Blackmore always playing to the whistle. She actually got her fingertips on it, but then sprayed it out of bounds. Set point here for Aver, 24-22. Lynchburg down by two. Green gonna set up Keough. She went down the line again. Averitt was ready for it this time. Nash will heal one over. Salafu tried to throw it straight down, and that went into the net, and set three belongs to the Averitt Cougars. They win it 25-22. We're going to set four, see if Lynchburg can make it a five-setter, or if the Cougars can get a key road victory to start Old Dominion Athletic Conference play. Set number four coming up in just a moment on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
college has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Set number four coming up here inside Turner Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. My name is Kyle Haney, my tag team partner, the brand new men's volleyball coach here at the University of Lynchburg. It's Ryan Turner and Ryan Avert takes sets two and three. Uh, we've got the stat sheet again. What stands out to you? I really love that balanced attack from Avert and they just they keep coming. They they just keep coming after you, these Cougars. Avert did a really good job of spreading the ball around there, just keeping Lynchburg on their toes. Not every ball needs to go down for a kill for, for you to give the defense something new to look at and just something new to think about, an extra wrinkle. On the Lynchburg side, I, I mean, a huge shout-out to Landon Spots for coming in and really energizing the Lynchburg team when she got subbed in. It was Sydney Phillips that brought the energy for Lynchburg in set number one, some great serving as well. And then in set three, Landon Spots really helping out for the Hornets. And it looked like Lynchburg pulled it within 23-22. They got within one there. I, you know, the entire gym is obviously a little bit biased. It's mostly Lynchburg fans. A few Avert fans have made the trip. But uh, it, it just felt like Lynchburg was going to get there. But the Cougars, as I said, just have that relentless quality. They come at you from all the different angles, different players. It's one of those what ifs. If Lynchburg wasn't running out of subs, maybe they could have got their normal 6-2 rotation in there. Maybe things would have gone a different way, but we move on to set four. Hope Parrish got knocked over on the serve receive, but it'll end up being a free ball coming here for the Avert Cougars. Hard knock, that one got tipped off a Lynchburg player, and that's the first point of set number four. Avert on top, 1-0. They lead 2-1. Cougars are in action Thursday at home. And we said Lynchburg back on the court this Saturday, a trip to Randolph to take on Trinity from Washington, D.C. Tori Williamson got all of that one, but handled by the Cougars. And there's another slight misplay. Jaina Leak kind of got caught in between the regular dig and, and going up high to receive that one. As a setter, you want to run up to the net. You want to be ready for that pass, but sometimes you got to play defense first. Two nothing Cougars. There's Blackmore again handling one. And Lynchburg called for the double. Three nothing. Avert on top. It's another one of these quiet little three point runs that that seemed fairly innocent at first. But these are the things that are that are winning the sets for Avert, Ryan. Oh, it adds up. I mean, coming to the end of that set when it's a, a two-point game, you, you think back how many runs did, uh, did Avert have of just two or three points. What an up. Yeah, Keo with just one hand, sticking it out. Williamson will bump it over, and that finds a seam for the first Lynchburg point. Yeah, you, I mean, you've got to be content to win some points like that. Everybody wants to get 
in system and have a big shot from one of your hitters, I mean, that's great, and that's what you practice. But sometimes you, you've just got to take what the other team is giving you. 3-1, Lynchburg by two. Abby Barlow to serve. Seen some great things from Barlow tonight. She and Cassie Blackmore have continued to impress. There's one that Jane Elite can't get down to. It's the fourth point of the set for Averett. Averett continuing to feed their right sides. Um, don't know if there's a matchup they like there or just that's that's their go-to, but they are just really hammering home the dominance on the right side. Yeah, Rachel Green, number one, impressive. Destiny McIntosh back to the net as well. And then Emma Nash has led them in kills. Leak will have to take that one off the twine. Let's see the Hornets set up here. Nash handled by Keo. Who is Salafu with a two-hander straight down, hammered point home. And now it's 4-2, Avert. Great job by Princess, just being up and ready for anything that comes her way. It's kind of that pogo stick jump that I was referring to earlier. She's just, she doesn't really need to load up to get high, and most of those great middles are that same way. Destiny McIntosh, handled by Barlow. Haley Keough, nice job there to let it fly. Hornets needed that. That is Kaylee Keough's 11th kill of the evening. Serving sub yet again for the Hornets. I think it's Sydney Phillips again, isn't it? She was the sure is. serving hero in set number one. Led the Lynchburg comeback. She did more than just serve, but uh, that, that seemed to be where the big effort was from and where it was needed at the time. That one hits the floor. Salafu's coming back for Sydney Phillips. And libero Cassie Blackmore back out as well. Oh, it's Cassie. It's just Cassie Blackmore. Sorry, I screwed that up. But it been back to that libero being such an interesting piece. I guess technically Salafu has to sub in for Sidney Phillips first. Correct. And then the libero comes on. Yes. One of the things that can confuse scorekeepers. And broadcasters, apparently. Cougars ready here. Dayton Moore with the set. That one taken by Sidney Mounts. Lynchburg over near the scorer's table again. Barlow will get it over the net. Mounts is going to go far side to Nash. Blackmore's there. Leak running to it. Kaylee Keough. Do drop in. Miranda Cummings helping finish off the point. And yeah, it will end up being a Lynchburg point. 5-4, Hornets within one. Maya Green back to serve. Southpaw sends one over, handled by Aaron Gray. Big shot that Blackmore digs out. Impressive there. That was high velocity. Moore now oh, ends up being Emma Nash again. Nash really on target. She does those things that we talk about that Kaylee Keough does as far as reads the floor so well, knows what shot to go to and when. And when she gets her entire bag going, she is an absolute force. Yeah, very similar players in terms of what they can do for their team. Top 10 in the ODAC in points, total points. Sixth at the moment. Keo stuffed at the net. Destiny McIntosh, that might have just been solo right there. Big point for Avert. they lead 7-4. Five and a half team blocks through the first three sets for Avert. It's been pretty impressive. McIntosh has had most of them with four block assists. And add at least another one to that. And that one will go in the net on the serve by Emma Nash. So it's a Lynchburg two-point deficit now. Keo to serve. Kaylee Keo's got to be one of those players that can get in the top five in points in the conference and maybe more Without at some a point doubt. in her career, right? Without a doubt. I mean, any time she steps on the court, she is the uh, primary target for, uh, for the other scouting report. Sydney Mounts went to the fastball, but it was low. Lynchburg's within one, 7-6. Hornets trail by a set, trying to force a decisive fifth set. Got to dig into our statistical research if we get there, figure out how many times these teams have gone to five sets this year. Avert had lost 10 sets in a row at one point, but now they've won the last two straight. 
Maya Green's going to set up Tori Williamson. Dayton Moore handled that up high. Scrambling around are the Cougars. Lynchburg looking for it. Yeah, thank you very much over there on the right side. That was big. And we're tied 7-7. Maya Green patrolling things nicely out there for Lynchburg. Off the fingertips of Maya Green, it'll be number three, Sydney Mount's going to get credit for the point. Net violation also mm. there. Okay. Still counts as a kill. It was Bree Spainauer on that previous point for Lynchburg that they did win. Don't want to leave her out, even though I confused her with Tori Williamson. Similar looks, similar numbers as well. Bree Spainauer, number 12. That's her right there, and she will get that point. Tori Williamson, number 13. But still, no excuse. Apologies to the Bree Spainauer fans. And I'm a big fan. A two-sport star in her own right also. Bree Spainauer on the basketball team. She should just play beach, too, and just get just be a true three-sporter. Three yeah. Easy, yeah, it's easy to easy say from up here. Say, right? <laughs> easy for the for the 40 somethings to say. Yeah, you just go out there and play more. Oh, there's Princess Salafu. Timely, and Lynchburg has a lead. Big one there. Again, maybe not flashy, but just love how Salafu can do that on those balls that are just kind of floating in her direction. It's almost that fly swatter, fly swatter kind of play. It's just in the area, and you just slap it right down. And so often the defense not ready for it. Hornets not ready for that. I'm not sure what they could have done. That was a good shot from the middle by Allie Wilkerson. That was just left of center. I mean, do we still count that as one of those middle attacks like you were talking about? Yeah, that's one of those routes as a middle you love running because you either have two blockers in front of you or nobody if there's a miscommunication like we saw there. Really tough to defend. Blackmore will dig another one out. Green's going to go to Williamson. One handed away by Kinsley Stevens. Lynchburg will get in system here. Bree Spainauer with a tip. And the Hornets, great effort to keep it alive, but the point goes to Lynchburg. They're on top 10-9. Talk about atta attacking from that back row because you can do it, but there's, there's restrictions on how you can do it. Yeah, anyone except for the libero. And uh, behind that white cream-colored 10-foot line, uh, really a good option to open up your offense. Uh, someone that maybe blockers don't even see coming. Um, really good option. You see it a lot more in the men's game than the women's game. But some teams who run it can really reap the benefits. But it is one that you need to, you need to practice, correct? It's one of the most difficult time and plays to run. Lynchburg with a two-point lead. We are in set four. Feels like the Hornets are regaining some momentum. There's a good stuff. Net Jow, Salafu involved, tried to get another right hand on that one. Pinball type of play that the Cougars will get the better of. And now they pull within one, 11-10, Lynchburg leading. Much more back and forth this set than we've seen in one, two, or three. Kaylee Gentry back in to serve for Avert. Right-hander will send one that Kaylee Keough handles. Tori Williamson, what a play there by Aaron Gray. Where'd she come from? And that's going to lead to a point. That's why she leads the conference in digs. She wasn't even in the screen, and all of a sudden you see the white jersey just flash in front of you, and the ball's off the floor. That is a big-time move by Gray. 11-11. Her counterpart, a libero for Lynchburg, Cassie Blackmore, will get to that one, but the pass was not really in anybody's direction, and the Hornets couldn't get to it. Lead. Goes back to the Avert Cougars. Kaylee Gentry's been at the service line a lot for Avert. Pretty effective weapon back there. Slide play for Salafu. Good shot there. First time we've seen them run that slide today. Really effective when you have someone as quick as Princess is to uh, get out to that pin and slam that ball down. Yeah, you just send one of your middles outside there as a right-handed swinger, are you always going to send her to the right, or could it be to the left as well? You're always going to send them to the right, even as a lefty. Okay. Uh, oh, just okay. one of those routes that uh, is specific to the middle. Barlow got to it. Pinball off the net. Blackmore sends it over. Effort ball right there. Emma Nash rising high, throwing down. That was nice. 
to Lynchburg's credit, I gave Averitt credit earlier in the game on picking some of these balls out of the net. Lynchburg's doing that same scrappy defense we saw at Averitt at the beginning of the game. Yeah, Abby Barlow, so good at that. Some of those players like her enjoyed that. That's a point of pride for them to be able to get down there, keep some of those plays alive. Haley Keough set up in rhythm and terminated. Tie ball game, 13-13. That was well done by Lynchburg offensively. Princess Salafu back to serve. Miranda Cummings returns to the middle. That means the libero comes out. 13-13. Gray will take the first touch. A little bit off target on the set. Keogh going to send it. She was closer to the fan section in the court, and it'll lead to a Lynchburg point. Interesting, uh, Lynchburg leaving Princess in the serve makes you wonder if they did miss those substitutions and are just thinking ahead here. Saw Princess Salafu serve a bit a week ago against Southern Virginia, definitely a part of her game, and you kind of worked everybody through the rule about one of your middles has to serve, right? Correct. One of them does, and, uh, and your libero can be the other server. Yeah, I don't think, I'm going to double check the stats, I don't think Miranda Cummings, who has basically been the other middle for Lynchburg along with Princess Salafu, I don't think she's served this year. If she has, it's in the single digits. Hasn't served a ton yet this season. 14-14 ball game. The other thought process, Princess has a top spin serve, which you don't see many in the, uh, in the women's game and can sometimes disrupt passers. Miranda Cummings got good right arm on that one, but handled by the Averitt Cougars. Leak. We'll set up Spainauer over there, and that one sent back on Lynchburg's side for I think a Cougar we have a, point. A net violation here. Hmm. Net called on Averett, not quite sure who. So is the scoreboard correct? Is yeah, they've switched it. They have switched yeah. it. It's 15 14, Lynchburg by one. I didn't see it, but no argument from Averett normally means it's a good call. <laughs> That, and that, that one is true for all sports. Yeah. <laughs> there, we said we couldn't find comparisons for some of these volleyball things. Oh, what a serve. Great Maya serve. Green will drop it in there. Two-point Lynchburg lead. I mentioned the top spin serve kind of throwing passers off. Sometimes that left, left serve, not, a, not very different than a lefty pitcher, just not used to seeing it. Yeah, just different enough. Maya Green was talking about how being a lefty as a setter was different. Well, there was a 50-50 ball that McIntosh got the better of. Met Cummings at the net, and Averitt will get the point. Back within one, 16-15. Lynchburg's going to ask about a mm. net violation here. Someone was in the net. I don't think we'll ever know who it was. <laughs> well, I bet our LHSN team might have a decent replay, but uh, good shot at Keogh talking to the referee there, and then she'll relay it with Hannah Givens. And I think maybe the conversation isn't done just yet. 16-15, score on your screen is right. Lynchburg by one, they trail by one set. Yeah, here comes your replay right on cue. Mm. Mm, might hard. have been the ball. Yeah, hard to tell from that angle, obviously. And the referee, of course, is in the way. If the ref is invisible, we're gonna get a better look there. Great job from the LHSN team. That's They're so good. We're going to run them down. We're going to run them down here in, in just a bit. Probably be well served to save it for a timeout. Emma Nash to serve. Line drive. Leak will push over to KK. Good rip. Nobody home. Point for Lynchburg, 17-15. As we see a timeout from Averitt. 17-15, Lynchburg by two. What do you want to do, Ryan? Dealer's choice. You want to keep it here and talk more about men's volleyball? Uh, you said you see a few more of those back row attacks. You said the game a uh, little bit more above the net in general, but the net is a little higher. One foot higher, is that right? Just about. Okay. Just about a foot taller. Uh, well, just about. See, now that's about. throwing me off because just what about. is it, like 11 inches or something? Or? Well, it's one of those uh, metric conversions. Oh, my gosh, Just like yeah. the 10-foot line yeah, is yeah, really yeah. the three-meter yeah. line. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you can't be 10 feet. <laughs> right, that's exactly right. At least you've got a Canadian around to help you out with Correct. the metric conversions. But, I get uh, confused all the time. One, yeah, one of these, one of these, centuries we'll, we'll get on board with that um 
Okay, so it's almost a foot taller. Okay, I got you. What is it like a like a like a? <laughs> I'm trying to think back to yeah, the I'm metric not, I'm system. I'm not even sure. This is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. The science department at, at the University of Lynchburg is just upset right now at our uh, inability to grasp uh, the full nuances of well, that. Thankfully, I think the game is going to uh, spare us any more confusion. Yeah. Yes, please. Let's get back to the game. What does Lynchburg need to do here? They're up by two. Uh, we've seen two-point two point leads get erased in the blink of an eye tonight. Uh, what can the Hornets do to hold on and keep the pressure on Avery? Uh, KK was huge in that front row and getting her back to serve. This might be one of those occasions you go back there, you tell her, hey, get this one in, give our defense a chance. Because of the timeout? Because of the timeout, because of how close the score is. Um, you would really hate to take a one-point lead ser or a two-point lead serving into a one-point lead receiving. That makes perfect sense. Getting a, a towel to the floor there on the Hornet logo at midcourt. As Tori Williamson gets a little mock applause. But um, good job. We don't want any perspiration there, especially at a key spot in this fourth set. Lynchburg by two. KK does get that one in. Good wall up front for Lynchburg. Avert's going to get another chance. Kaylee Keo on the dig. They'll push it over to the left side, and Tori Williamson uses what ended up being a perfect set for that shot from Maya Green. Lynchburg by three. Really smart shot there. You see the blocker trying to press, but that ball just comes at such a different time when it's not a swing. Keo will get that one in. Destiny McIntosh rises up and gets that one down for Avert. McIntosh has been really good. She doesn't have the best numbers on the team, but uh, I like what Destiny McIntosh has brought to the table. She's got to be closing in on double-digit kills. She had seven through the first three sets. Avert does lead two sets to one. Lynchburg leads by two in set four. That went into the net by Sydney Mounts. Hornets on top, 19-16. Here comes Princess Salafu again. Fun atmosphere in Turner always. It's always a great atmosphere just, uh, just outside at Schellenberger Field for all the different Lynchburg events. Kind of a backhand hit there by Blackmore, but it kept the play alive for Lynchburg. They lead by three. Nice job by Salafu and Spainauer on the stuff. Here comes Emma Nash with the back row attack and gets the point. So there, there, we just talked about it, and you see it right there. A great player like Nash, she can just score from everywhere. Yeah, and it's really tough right now. Lynchburg playing great defense. That ball might have been sailing out, but you're playing such great defense, you think if you can get a touch, it's going to pop up. That's what impressed me last week when Lynchburg beat Southern Virginia. Some of the balls that Lynchburg let go, here's one right on cue, a serve that's too long. But some of those balls that Lynchburg was letting go in some really pressure situations, because as a defender, your mentality is think, I, I'm going to dig everything out. Nothing's getting by me. So to let some of those close ones go out of bounds is, is probably equally impressive, I think. There is a timeout by the Avert Cougars. Lynchburg, 20-17. to 17. I asked you what Lynchburg needed to do to keep their foot on the gas. Let's... Uh, Let's put our mind in Olivia Earl's huddle there and see what she's saying to her ball club right now, Ryan. Uh, man, as a coach, it's tough. Down three, you know, Lynchburg beat you to 20, which is always the goal. But calling that timeout early gives you enough time, rally behind them, say, hey, we need eight before they get five. That's, that's a drill you can run in your gym constantly of just, hey, eight before five, eight before five. And uh, I don't think there'll be too much pressure here. I know there's they're a set up to begin with, um, but both teams early in the season, I don't think either one would be upset going to five here. I would love to see five selfishly as a volleyball fan. I, I think I actually made the mistake of saying that last week when, when all the Lynchburg fans just wanted the three set sweep, which Lynchburg <laughs> did get last week against Southern Virginia. It was a four set win for Lynchburg on Saturday against Dickinson who I made a mistake there. I said Dickinson was from Ohio. They're from Pennsylvania. I think I was thinking of Denison. Denison. It, it's, Very yeah. similar logo. It, it's, it, it's so similar. And, you know, hey, it's early in the season for me. 
I don't know what my excuse will be late in the season. I'm still making mistakes. Misplay there from Blackmore. We touched on it a lot at the start of the game. Credit to Jane Alik there after a timeout getting that serve in. I think Lynchburg overall has been really good from the service line. And uh, yeah, I mean, the numbers kind of, they don't kind of, they do continue to back that up. But if we get to a fifth set, we may have to revisit that. Williamson, oh my, she timed that up perfectly. Just up the staircase and down for a Lynchburg point, 21-18. Now Tori Williamson will go to serve. Well, she's been critical in this ball game for Lynchburg. And really seems to be coming alive here in set number four. Dayton Moore had to twist her way over to set that one. And that one well out of play, wide left. 21-19, Averitt pulls within two. This is number 21, Allie Wilkerson. Freshman from Hillsboro, North Carolina. Freshman making immediate impact for both of these teams. Lee tried to dump one over. Averitt's ready for it. There's Nash, and that'll get blocked out of play for an Averitt point. So you see Averitt right now, no libero on the court. That might have been a setter dump. She was hoping the middle serving might have just fallen asleep. Cougars pull within one, and now it's a Lynchburg timeout. They lead by one. Hey, since we have a timeout and we're not guaranteed a fifth set, even though the Lynchburg fans want it, let's run down our crew here that we need to thank. Of course, our director is Sam Rice. We've got the Zorro brothers, Christian and JP, on the cameras again off the tennis court. I can't wait to watch those guys play tennis. Would you want to be a doubles partner with your brother, or do you think you'd get angry at him? Oh, I think they're going to fight anyways. I don't <laughs> think tennis is going to change much about that. That's true. You can channel that energy against another team. Yeah, Christian and JP, we've got John working the camera and running around. Matty J on the replays again. And uh, Josh Smith is helping us out on the highlights. Of course, Tim LaDuca down there at the scorer's table, our fearless leader, and just uh, running a, a very tight ship down there at the scorer's table. Lynchburg, I don't want to say they need to tighten up because they're playing pretty well here in this fourth set, but they lead by one in a Lynchburg timeout. Still one remaining. Wilkerson with a strong serve. Picks out Blackmore. Kaylee Keogh is going to get a point off of this. Deflected, and then Wilkerson had a chance, but just couldn't quite keep it in play. Lynchburg by two. Princess Salafu to serve. See if we get that top spin in effect here. Handled pretty easily. Nash with a big one. Leak got to it. It was almost self-defense with the way that ball was coming from Emma Nash. Ferocious. Hornets back within one, or excuse me, Cougars back within one. The Hornets lead by one. Dayton Moore to serve. Didn't start, but really has run most of the setting duties in sets two and three. And there's, uh, I think, the third time we've seen that lift called. Yeah. Double called there on Jaina, not again. Not a whole lot of arguing. 22-22. A serve from number 23, Dayton Moore. Overpass, Destiny McIntosh handled it. Leak was in the zip code, but no way she was going to dig that one out. And here comes the final timeout from Coach Hannah Givens. A little mini run here from Avert at a good time for the Cougars. 23-22, Avert by one. Avert is three and four on the season, but they started the year three and one. They lost three in a row up in Cleveland at Case Western Reserve. That's another fun one to say, another fun school to talk about, although you're not going to confuse them with any other schools Certainly. like we did with Dennison Certainly and Dickinson. Not. Uh, which you talked about the competition they played, Case Western, Mount Union, and Allegheny. Three pretty strong ball clubs for Avert this weekend. I mean, as a coach, 
you you want to make your team aware of that, but you also want to let them know, hey, the standard is is not to get swept, even by the best competition. We need to we need to not only compete but beat some of these good teams, right? Yeah, three top 75 teams they saw this past weekend, uh, and you know you're going to see your handful of top 100, top 50 teams in the ODAC. So it's it's nothing they won't see later in the year, and uh, we'll certainly be better for it at the end of the year. Emma Nash has 18 kills. And her next one will give her 660 in her career. Here's Kaylee Keough. That will send one over from the near left side for Lynchburg. Leap going to set Keough again. That one hung up in the air. And that one will go out of play off of Blackmore's hands. Avert within one point of a match win, a conference win, 24-22. Hornets got to dig deep here. No room for air. Back to the wall. And a match point. More to try to do it for Aver. Leap going to go to the right side. Did it hit the line? It did not. That's a win for the Cougars. And they are excited. 1 0 in ODAC play. Avert moves to 4 and 4. Lost set number one. Lynchburg had an incredible fight back the tail end of set one. And then the Cougars win sets two, three, and four. Lynchburg is going to fall to two and four overall on the season. 0 and 1 in the ODAC. Uh, Ryan, let's just stay here for a moment for some takeaways. You got to feel for Lynchburg a little bit, but the, the margins are so thin in the game of volleyball and especially in the ODAC. Hornets didn't play bad, but you end up dropping your first conference game to a rival, the Avert Cougars. Yeah, volleyball comes down to a couple points in every set, and this time the scoreboard showed it. I mean, quite literally a couple points in every set. Uh, the small things, a young Lynchburg team will uh, take this and learn and grow from it, I'm sure, and uh, Avert will be happy to get a road win. Yeah, and really, I think the Cougars, after that first set, when they lost the lead, they could have hung their heads. They could have gotten down. They could have just kind of let the night get away from them. They rallied back and played really good in set two. And then they do enough here in three and four to get the victory. Coach Hannah Givens talking to her team in the circle. And you can see some players talking there. And we'll tell you what's next for Lynchburg. They will play this Saturday, September 16th against Trinity. That game is at Randolph College. So not a long trip for the Cougars. They are on the road next Wednesday, September 20th at Randolph-Macon. And then our next LHSN broadcast for volleyball will be in two weeks, two weeks from today, Tuesday, September 26th. Avert hosting Bridgewater, or excuse me, Lynchburg hosting Bridgewater. I'm sorry, Lynchburg there. And uh, it'll be Avert there at home this Thursday in Danville for a little try match against VUL and Pfeiffer this Thursday. So we've seen some great volleyball tonight. The year is off to a good start. Maybe not exactly what the Hornets want at two and four. A little short two-game winning streak is snapped for Lynchburg. And the Avert Cougars move to four and four, even 500. They snap a three-game losing streak. 3-1, your final there. Cougars win it inside Turner. And for my broadcast partner, Ryan Turner, and our entire crew here on LHSN, Kyle Haney saying so long. We've got some other... Great Hornet athletics coming up at home this week. You can see here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. So we'll talk to you. Our next volleyball game is Tuesday, September 26th. Lynchburg will host Bridgewater. And as always, you can see the action live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.